On this episode, we are psyched to welcome Belgian ambassador to Thailand, Sibyl de Cartier. So if you want to learn more about Thailand's relationship with one of its oldest diplomatic partners, you'll dig this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawa de crap, you be rolling with the Bangkok podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 to escape the trauma of stepping out of a hot shower onto a cold tile floor in minus 40 degrees Celsius weather. And I gotta say, I'm a fan of not having to do that anymore. And I am Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 21 years ago, fell in love with trying to guess how long the Thai government would take before they backtracked on their most recent policy announcement. So I never left. Legend says he's still waiting. That's right. You know, sometimes it's 24 hours, sometimes 48, sometimes it's like three or four days before they reverse themselves. (laughs) All right, we wanna give a big thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a whole bunch of cool stuff, including our ad-free regular show a day early, behind the scenes photos and videos of our interviews, discounts on swag, access to our Discord server to chat with me, Greg, and other listeners, and various other things that aren't available to regular listeners. But best of all, patrons also get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and Bangkok topics. We just finished recording this week's bonus show, and we chatted about some much appreciated listener feedback on last week's alcohol theme show, the sweet salvation of getting your aircon units cleaned and the latest controversy involving Miss Universe Thailand and the Thai flag. To become a patron, head to bangkokpodcast.com forward slash support. Right on. Okay, well, on this episode, we are very happy to welcome the latest guest in our ambassador series, Madame Sibylle de Cartier, the Belgian ambassador to Thailand. Before this, she also served as ambassador in Egypt and Sudan and did some diplomatic service in Rwanda as well. Now, as a career diplomat, she has worked hard to build bridges, which makes sense in this case, as the relationship between Thailand and Belgium is far deeper than most people know. Now, she was generous enough to join me online one evening to discuss her job in Thailand, the difficulties of dealing with COVID, and the fascinating story behind the Thai-Belgium bridge on Rama 4 Road at Wireless Road, which is something that I've been wanting to talk about on the show for a long time, and she was the perfect person to talk about it. So here is my very cool conversation with Ambassador Sibyl de Cartier. Well, we are very uh, honored to have Her Excellency, the Ambassador uh, of Belgium to Thailand, Mrs. Sibylle de Chatier. Did I even approach correctness on that one? Yes, it's good. It's okay. <laughs> I, I apologize. Well, Madam Ambassador, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Is everything going okay at the uh, at, at your residence there? Everything uh, remaining on track for a COVID recovery? We cannot complain. <laughs> so I would like to hear your story. You've had an interesting diplomatic career. Um, can you please let us know a little bit about your background and how you ended up coming to Thailand? Yeah, so I'm a Belgian career diplomat. I have been uh, in the Belgian diplomatic service for more than 20 years now. Um, just before Thailand, I was ambassador of Belgium in Egypt, uh, also accredited to Sudan. And uh, before that, I had a uh, quite a varied parkour uh, from Africa to Europe. And of course, uh, with uh, some uh, interludes in uh, Brussels, of course, uh, the capital of Belgium. Did you say Egypt and in Africa as well? Yes, I have been posted in uh, Kenya and Rwanda in the beginning of my career. Wow, that must have been a, a, like, not, no, no training wheels there. That's a serious assignment, I imagine. I mean, these are uh, definitely very uh, different uh, type of assignment. Uh, um, Kenya is also a UN seat, so uh, it also involves some, uh, some work. It was also a time where we had negotiation ongoing in Sudan and uh, difficult situation in Somalia. So it was uh, quite a 
challenging task and very too too many different topics i would say uh, rwanda <laughs> is different it's uh, it's a country with whom we have very uh, historical link uh, belgium uh, as a former not colony but uh, rwanda was a mandate of belgium after the first world war mm-hmm. and uh, and so it's a very uh, intense uh, bilateral relation with with all what that involved but it was uh, uh, both uh, beautiful experiences Yeah, we recently had the Kenyan ambassador to Thailand on, uh, Mr. Kip- Kiptinis, and uh, it sounds like a fascinating part of the world to explore. Beautiful. 54 countries to discover. Oh, wow, that's, <laughs> you know, coming from Canada like I do, um, <laughs> it's just this massive expanse of a single culture. Uh, it's, that's, that's kind of mind-blowing to me. Yeah, that, that would be like saying that Costa Rica is like Canada. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not as cold. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the relationship between Belgium and Thailand then. I, I want to hear about the, the diplomatic history there and um, what is the relationship like? I mean, Belgium and Thailand have very, um, um, I would say, long history and common history and uh, also quite, I mean, a positive uh, history. Um, Belgium in this region, uh, we, we are a country that is only born in 1830 and we already started having relation with uh, Thailand in 1839. So only nine years after oh. we had our own independence. So I think it says a lot. Wow. Um, uh, we are usually known for, um, you know, some of the actors, the Belgians that played a very big role under the reform uh, launched by uh, the King Rama V, uh, Shula Longkorn. Uh, we had important uh, advisors uh, to the king uh, that were Belgians, and the most famous of them all is uh, Roland Jacquemin, uh, which is uh, usually recognized for uh, having uh, helped Thailand uh, kept his independence and uh, also reform its uh, legal system. So that's, you know, the beginning. Oh, um, wow. But uh, since then, I mean, uh, much more, of course. Uh, more uh, recently... Uh, um, I mean, it, it comes from, uh, you know, academic cooperation to, uh, to uh, the commercial and uh, economic link we have with some of our enterprise having investments here. Um, of course, the, the, let's say, friendship between our two royal families. So I can go in a lot of direction on these questions. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like an incredibly deep and meaningful relationship. It is. I mean... Uh, um, I mean, it's, it's really, I mean, uh, you have, uh, you know, traces of Belgium's involvement uh, in Thailand that you can find around, uh, around the city. Uh, uh, the other day I was uh, walking around the European neighborhood and found the, this old tramway, which, uh, which has the name of one of our Belgian city, because this was one of the things that uh, Belgium did in Thailand is uh, supporting also its... Uh, um, transformation uh, economically, and Belgium was very active in electricity and tramway in the beginning of the 20th century. Wow, you guys go way back. It's like an old marriage almost. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, but a good marriage. <laughs> that's good, that's good. So um, um, what can you tell me about the, the Belgian embassy here? How, how big is it? And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know where it is in Bangkok. And uh, what kind of things are the staff busy working on these days? Uh, we are in Saturn. And uh, we are about 30 people uh, at the embassy. Uh, we are from uh, the embassy in Bangkok. We are not only covering Thailand, but we are also covering uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, and uh, PDR Lao. So we are covering four countries from here. Um, so we are an embassy that is also uh, a regional office on some issue, IT, accounting, So we are covering uh, on these issues more than uh, the four countries. So, so yes, so uh, you can imagine that uh, with this task description, uh, the life of the colleagues at the embassy is quite uh, diverse and <laughs> diverse. And uh, we, uh, uh, we do, I mean, of course, consular work. That's our priority here, support to our citizens. Uh, as much as we can. And in these COVID circumstances, it has been sometimes challenging for the Belgians, uh, not only uh, immigration issue, but also some people have seen their, uh, you know, economic uh, 
uh, situation uh, changed drastically and dramatically. So we have done what we could. Um, we do not have uh, all the tools we would like to, but at hmm. least we can uh, support people uh, uh, sometimes to, um, you know, to leave the country, return to Belgium, or just support paperwork, of course. Um, so yeah. we do our best on, uh, on that. It's a very important part of our job. Uh, and then for the rest, yes, like all embassy, we uh, support the bilateral relation between uh, Belgium and Thailand, but also Belgium and Cambodia, Laos and uh, Myanmar. Okay, I'll put this one. <laughs> we can come back to it later. It's a very <laughs> uh, specific circumstances right now. Right. Um, right. We also uh, support our enterprises and, uh, you know, try to uh, ensure uh, that uh, we can uh, also promote more investment and then more trade between our two countries uh, in a regular dialogue uh, with uh, the Thai authorities. And uh, we, when circumstances allow, we try also to uh, deepen uh, the cultural links uh, and also the people-to-people -people contacts. Um, I personally, uh, personally, sorry, believe that uh, people to people contact is actually a very important uh, part uh, of the bilateral relation between two countries because they are the one that uh, last and uh, you know give uh, very different fruits as well. Yeah, there's there's a lot to be said about actually getting out there and shaking hands with people face to face and sharing a few drinks, which of course must be very difficult these days. Uh, it's 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 hard to. Uh, to work a room when you're in a Teams meeting, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, uh, we have had to uh, reinvent ourselves, but uh, I still believe in face-to-face -face diplomacy and right. uh, we do it as much as we can. Of course, we, we take the measures we have to, um, but uh, we do it as much as we can because nothing replaces uh, the direct contact people can have together. Sure. Now you, you're you're you've been in Thailand not too long. You came to your posting in the beginning of 2021. Uh, September 2020. September 2020. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So what is uh, what's one thing that you are really focused on when you when you came here? Was there like a a list of things that you really wanted to accomplish in your first year or a few years? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, we are challenged by circumstances, but uh, <laughs> uh, we, um, I mean, the, as a, a, a an ambassador, when I arrive in a post, I define together with my headquarters the priorities for the next four years. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so of course, uh, uh, we have to work on them afterwards. Uh, one other priority we have uh, here in Thailand is uh, to uh, progress on a social security agreement with Thailand. Um, this is a uh, um, very um, important. Uh, the Thai authorities have underlined their support to it, um, but it's uh, it's going. It's it's a challenging uh, discussion because it involves uh, a lot of actors on both sides. How, what, what is a social security? I'm I'm not sure what that means. We actually Belgium has this type of agreement with a lot of countries. It allows actually uh, Belgium to cover its citizens abroad. Um, oh. To make it simple, it allows of course to, uh, Thailand to cover its citizens in Belgium as well. Just uh, to make it simple, it can be um, much more um, than this or, or, or more restricted, but uh, that's, uh, let's say, the, the most important element of it. Fascinating. Uh, we have here uh, a few thousands Belgians, uh, a lot of them uh, retired after a long career uh, in Belgium, and are, of course, right. uh, eager to, uh, to be supported also here after this. That's really interesting. So your your boss then is uh, Mr. De Croo, Am I saying that correctly? That's the prime minister. Is I guess technically he's your boss, right? Like eventually. I mean, <laughs> of course, he's the head of the the government. Uh, our direct, of course, direct uh, boss for an ambassador is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, which is Sophie right. Wilmes, uh, uh -huh. former prime minister uh, and current min deputy prime minister and minister of Foreign Affairs of Belgium. Oh, okay, so when you report back to home base, um, what kind of things are you reporting on? Are there any um, targets you're expected to meet, any trade deals you're working on? What's the relationship between Thailand and Belgium in terms of, of trade and commerce? I mean, yes, of course, we have, uh, you know, political links that we try to maintain and uh, we have regular dialogues. Um, between headquarter and 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 the Thai uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we also, of course, have uh, trade issues. Uh, of course, right now it's been uh, challenging for for companies here, 
um, because uh, the contacts are less easy. You know, people that usually come every three months, uh, of course. I mean, now things ha are uh, getting smoother, so we hope that we'll uh, be started again. We had also very uh, logistical challenges, you know, worldwide, uh, slowing down process, uh, administrative process. And this was not typical for here, but of course it creates sometimes issues that uh, we have to deal with. So we have a regular dialogue on on, on all these issues and, and many more. Right. What are some of the things that, that Belgium sends to Thailand and vice versa, some of the products? Um, Belgium's first uh, export product is uh, pharmaceutical worldwide, not, uh, not specifically in Thailand, but worldwide. Oh. Oh. Um, uh, and actually, our export to uh, to Thailand is uh, is quite varied. Um, in the export from Thailand to Belgium, uh, we are a uh, um, platform for diamonds. So that's uh, one of the things you would see. And of course, uh, Thailand has other products, uh, different types of uh, um how you call it, electric material and all others, and also fruit and vegetables. And I mean, Thailand has also quite a, a varied export to Belgium. So in both uh, ways, it's uh, it's quite varied. Interesting. It's funny you mentioned diamonds because I, I remember um, the, the, I've only been to Belgium once and I loved it. Uh, I was the first time that I ever had Thai food in, in, an, in a restaurant overseas was in Antwerp. Okay. And uh, I, or, I couldn't believe how expensive a plate of chicken fried rice was you know you could get it for 30 baht on the street in bangkok but i think in antwerp it was about 12 euros or something yes um okay <laughs> yes this is not usually uh the typical belgian dish uh, yeah. so I, you can get french fries for 40 baht or a little bit more maybe <laughs> that's right probably uh, several pints of beer as well a few euros <laughs> <laughs> um yes i have to say i was uh i was prepared to be underwhelmed by the Belgian waffles. And uh, I thought, well, how, how good could they be? It's just a waffle. And then I had one. Wow, are they ever good? <laughs> I was really surprised. I have some good address for you of uh, in Thailand where you can find them. Oh, please, please send that we to me. We have some I'll... Belgians working on these and uh, they are really good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to go down and check that out. It would help me get out of this uh, COVID funk that I've been stuck in for months. Um, so speaking of COVID, actually, I mean, it's, it's greatly reduced, um, the travel, like we just were talking about and the trade. So how, how does someone in your position begin to, to rebuild those relationships, especially when you're dealing with two countries that are not on equal footing? I mean, Belgium is a very advanced country. It's a very, um, wealthy country, uh, and Thailand is a developing country. So how do you negotiate those, that discrepancy between, economies and trade relationships when you're trying to rebuild something after COVID? Well, I think in crisis management, uh, um, you know, we can all learn from each other. I think, uh, you know, Thailand has given us all a lesson in the beginning of the crisis and uh, Belgium has been um, more efficient in uh, vaccination management, for example. So I think we learn from each other in, in terms of crisis management and each one has to invent and reinvent constantly. And uh, an important part, I think, in uh, during the crisis is uh, flexibility and uh, adaptability. Um, of course, now we are slowly getting, hopefully, uh, <laughs> we are not <laughs> going <laughs> backwards crossed. anymore. And yes, we are, we are slowly going in, uh, in a recovery mode. And I think there uh, also we have a lot of things that we can use from each other. And um, one of the most important elements, uh, I think, uh, from the crisis is uh, to ensure that we, uh, we rebuild in a sustainable way. And I think uh, the crisis has given, you know, some, um, showed us very clearly, you know, the limits of some, of, some parts of our way of living. Right. And I think uh, we are all looking into and this is where I believe Belgium has a, a few assets that we can uh, use and uh, where we can uh, be uh, you know useful for our partners uh, digital finance for example is uh, a, a very uh, one of our assets uh, we are developing also uh, bio agriculture uh, technologies um, so there is a lot of uh, things we can learn from uh, each other and uh, there is definitely a 
uh, things we can exchange uh, together. I mean, sure. uh, you, you probably know uh, Belgium is um, a pharmaceutical hub. Uh, I said it was our first export product. So this is uh, something where, you know, the crisis underlined, uh, you know, the importance also of our new tools. Uh, and I mean, we are in the middle of COP26. Yes, the big environmental meeting. Yeah. Uh, we have a huge call from the youth all over the world for changes. I think uh, right. uh, Europe is not uh, doing too bad in uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, lead by example uh, in terms of uh, setting very high ambition. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not enough. I think we can all do more, um, but already it's uh, very ambitious. And I think, uh, you know, the presence of the prime minister of Thailand at the COP shows commitment on this side as well. Yeah, I, th I mean, uh, the, the the prime minister of Thailand got some some um, criticism for his sort of lack of uh, commitment to a lot of the agreements. But I think that we've talked about this on the podcast before. Thailand is a country of baby steps, um, and I think uh, being there uh, is is the first, hopefully, the first step of many important ones. So um, th things in Thailand, as you guys, I'm sure you know, <laughs> don't move really fast. It's just kind of the way things get done here. But hopefully, they will get done. I mean, I really believe uh, more and more there is a, a general recognition that uh, there is no choice uh, and climate change is there. I think uh, flooding in Europe in the summer and uh, recent flooding in, uh, in uh, Thailand have just uh, once more underlined that we are all in the same bath. Yeah, exactly. Literally sometimes, yeah. <laughs> So speaking of Europe, um, does Europe have an ambassador? Like, is there a European ambassador in Thailand as well? There is a European ambassador, a new one. He presented credential uh, last week oh. uh, to His Majesty. Um, oh, great. So recently arrived, yes. Maybe we can get him on the show too. But until then, um, what, what's the difference between your job and, and his job? I mean, our job are complementary. Um, so... I mean, we have um, talked, uh, for example, about climate change. I mean, um, there is a part, I mean, last, uh, the week before we were together um, at the Minister of Environment, you know, um, having this discussion with Thailand about uh, the COP26, the ambition of Europe, this is something that we do collectively. Right. Um, but of course, when I take care of a Belgian citizen, uh, that's, unfortunately passed away somewhere or mm -hmm. this is something that we do on a bilateral basis so we are our jobs are complementary and we put our strength together and in the region now uh, we have uh, recently uh, as team europe as we call it uh, we have you know shown uh, that uh, uh, europe pays attention to the region we have uh, defined recently a strategy for Europe, the Indo-Pacific strategy. Okay. This is a common strategy, but it's also uh, reinforced by bilateral action and also some of some European uh, members' um, bilateral strategy. So I think our jobs are complementary. There is, uh, there are things we do as a team, and uh, we have uh, our European ambassador as chef de file, we would say in French. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and there are things that, uh, we do on a bilateral basis and, uh, we complete each other. <laughs> That's nice. I have to mention, of course, uh, the ongoing discussion on the FTA, the free trade agreement between, uh, Europe and Thailand that is, uh, slowly, um, being discussed. Uh, we are for the moment, uh, looking at our level of ambitions and, uh, trying to see, uh, you know, how, how we go further on this issue together. All right. Well, as we're, as we're slowly getting to the end here, um, one thing I wanted to ask you about, and this is a story that a Belgian friend of mine, uh, my buddy Tom, told me a while ago, and it's about the uh, bridge, the Thai-Belgian bridge on Ramaphore Road at Wireless Road by Lumpini Park there. Mm -hmm. It's got a fascinating history, and um, I, I, I've heard it from him, but maybe you could tell a little bit of the story here. Yeah, I mean, this bridge was actually a, a bridge that existed in Belgium that was dismantled and given to Thailand. Um, so this was done under one of my predecessors, Baron Noton, which is a, a very uh, good diplomat. Uh, and he negotiated with Belgium that we offer this bridge to Thailand. 
um, it was, of course, a logistical uh, nightmare. You know, you have to <laughs> place bet. a bridge. Uh, <laughs> and you imagine that Thailand and definitely Bangkok at that time was even more congested than to today. And, uh, you know, you don't want to stop traffic. So with the help of uh, Shavarat Shanvi Rakul, which was at that time um, also responsible for a very big uh, enterprise in Thailand, they have placed this bridge here in 56 hours. Wow. Can you... Uh, <laughs> so that was in 1988, and that was the first uh, flyover bridge. So now there are much, many of them because they have been taken... Um, the Belgian bridge has actually been taken by example. Other countries have afterwards uh, uh, also, you know, uh, offered another bridge to, uh, to Thailand. And I think we have to thank all of these ones that work for it uh, because it really helped traffic uh, in Bangkok. Yeah, it was, and it was the first flyover bridge in all of Bangkok? This was the first flyover. Wow. And uh, yes, it was followed by a few others. <laughs> yeah, thank, I think we're all thankful for those as well. All right, well, one last question before we wrap it up then. Um, now, Belgium has, has three official languages. There's Dutch, French, and German, am I right? There is Dutch, French, and German, yes. Yeah, there's also Flemish, but that's not an official language. That's it's a Dutch. Dialect? It's the same. Is it? Okay. Um, will there be any Dutch or Flemish people out there that will get angry if if you hear if they hear that? You discuss with them, not me. <laughs> I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> I, 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 I bow to your expertise. I'm not going to lecture you on the nuances of European languages. Um, so there's there's of course we all know the word um, Sanuk about Thailand, and that's the the. The, the the pursuit of fun and, and lightheartedness and you know it's it's sort of hard to uh, translate into English directly but there's in, in doing some research and reading up on on Belgium I found a similar word in Dutch that made me kind of go oh that's interesting and it is I'm going to try and pronounce it it's gezelligheid gezelligheid okay gezelligheid <laughs> Um, and on Wikipedia says it depend depending on context, it can be translated as conviviality, coziness, or fun. It is often used to describe a social and relaxed situation. Being a vague, abstract notion, the word is considered by some to be an example of untranslatability and one of the hardest words to translate into English. Yeah, I think the German word gemütlich is uh, the equivalent. Uh, <laughs> okay, I I'm don't not even going to try that. <laughs> Um, yes, I think, uh, you know, Belgians, uh, wherever they are from and whatever language they speak, uh, we have a few things in common, whatever. Uh, the one is uh, we like to eat. I think we have that in common with uh, the Thai. Uh, <laughs> and we like good food. And uh, we really enjoy this gazellighead. <laughs> uh, so we, we do, uh, we enjoy having, you know, good time, uh, with friends and uh, enjoying the moment. And I think what's characterized us as well is uh, we are not a nationalist country. And uh, and so we are actually the first one to uh, make fun of ourselves. And usually um, people appreciate that <laughs> about <laughs> us, <laughs> that uh, we do not take ourselves too seriously. It's very similar to Canada. There's nothing Canadians like more than a Canadian joke. Yeah. So, um, but the backside of it is, I think we're not that good to promote ourselves. And uh, I mean, I've already discovered in Thailand uh, a few things done by Belgians that were really amazing and incredible, from uh, boats to uh, to supports to uh, to uh, street children. Uh, I mean, it goes really in all direction. And uh, we, I mean, from kitchen to, I mean, cuisine to, I mean, really we have uh, here that do an incredible job uh, and uh, I'm trying, you know, to collect their stories and uh, promote it better because I think uh, we have a story to tell. Well, I'll tell you what, you tell me where that waffle place is and I'll promote it all over the place. Uh, <laughs> I'm a fan. You will get it. Uh, <laughs> and not only this, uh, I promise you have a few places to discover in Thailand uh, for Belgian cuisine, uh, from Bangkok to Chiang Mai to Phuket <laughs> to Wayne. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Well, Madam Ambassador, thank you so much for making time in the evening to come on and, and talk to me. I know it's I know you're busy and it's uh, it's evening and it's time for relaxing or as as maybe it's better to say it's time for 
Geselligheid. I'm terrible at that language. <laughs> but thank you again and um, best of luck with, with your job. And hopefully that we can run into each other in person at some event somewhere in the not too distant future. With pleasure and good luck with the blog. Thank you very much and uh, have a good evening. Good evening. Dude, I got to say, I don't know how you meet all these ambassadors. Well, technically, we haven't met. I mean, I just reached out to her on Twitter and she was uh, very nice. And, you know, ambassadors, uh, that's their job. They're ambassadors. They're, that's their job to speak to to people about their country and, you know, to, to push. Yeah, but she's an ambassador to Thailand. She's not ambassador to expat <laughs> to podcastville <laughs> i don't know i don't know what i don't know, i don't know what to call us expat expat random expat dudes like us well i think i think uh ambassador is just regular folks with a cool job and uh i mean i think most people just like talking about what they do and ambassadors happen to do something that's really cool and relates to something that we're interested in learning about so boom well as i've said many times you are an excellent connector far better than i am uh, I'm not sure what service I provide on the podcast, but uh, <laughs> it's certainly not. It's certainly not. Uh, it's certainly not connections. Uh, I'm not a connector, um, but uh, no, she seems really cool and interesting. And I, I had no idea about that bridge. I've passed that bridge for 20 years. Yeah. I remember seeing that bridge because I used to work on on uh, with you, with you and uh, sorry, Rumor D. So if you just go down a little bit further, you can see that sure. bridge. Um, I had no idea that was a story. Yeah, it's a super cool story. I remember hearing it years ago, like I said, in the interview from my buddy Tom. And uh, I'm like, we got to work that into the, the podcast somehow. Um, so it's it's really cool to hear it uh, from her because she's got a much closer connection than you or I have. And actually, actually, I found doing some research online, I found some photos of the bridge in Antwerp, I believe. And we'll send those out to our patrons. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a really cool, oh, very really cool. cool connection between the two countries. And like, like I said, it goes back, uh, Belgium, Thailand relationship goes back a long, long way. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So thank you again, uh, Madam Ambassador, and, um, hope to see you one day in real life, IRL as the kids say. And, um, they like beer in Belgium, right? They are really good. Heck yeah. Uh, Heck yeah, they do. You can share a really delicious Belgian beer. How's that? Looking forward to that. <laughs> so yeah, many thanks once again. All right, let's get into Love, Loathe, or Live With, where one of us picks a particular aspect of living in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here, loathe about living here, or have come to accept as something that we just have to learn to live with, no matter how we feel about it. The last time I asked Ed what he thought about endless refills at restaurants, so this week it's Ed's turn. All right, dude, uh, I know you're a domestic guy, but you still uh, order takeout and or have a fair number of deliveries come to your place, be it food or or Lazada merchandise. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Sometimes I'll get the occasional helicopter shipment of Big Macs dropped off. Uh, I thought you were going to say big shoes. <laughs> no, they just sail them right across the ocean. Some guy gets in and paddles them right across. But yeah, I love delivery <laughs> services. Who doesn't? All right. So what's your take on this? Uh, admittedly, I don't think anyone could love this. But what's your take on delivery services? It could be like, one guy on a motorbike or could be even even places that are more formal um what's your take on like the delivery address confirmation process where they already have your address you know they presumably have a google maps but it's like i'm always getting calls from people to confirm my address mm, i see and you know then you know in my case it's, these are like this is like fast food that I, that I order multiple times per week. So do you know what I'm talking about? Like you, where, where you get a phone call and they're just saying, do you live at here? And you're like, well, yeah, that's the address. I see. Yeah. That I gave so, so you. So you, you, you make an order <laughs> so, and then they call you back to confirm that you're at the address you gave them already. Well, usually it's the, usually it's the day of the delivery. And it's, not, I, I often feel that I, like I sometimes miss deliveries if if I don't pick up the phone or if they can't confirm. So what's your take on this? I mean, uh, in a way, I guess it could be seen as more professional. Yeah, the confirmation. Uh, interesting. I I mean, I don't I don't love it, but I I'll take that hit if it's the difference between me getting something and not getting something. Like if they got to get something to me and need to confirm it, sure, I'll talk to them on the phone for 10 seconds. It doesn't bother me. So I'll live okay. with it. I don't love it, but I think it's uh, something you just have to have to eat. 
I, I need to improve my tie because I want to. I want to be able to say in Thai, just go to the red dot. Right on the GPS. You know, because because I, I know I know, I know they're looking at Google Maps. Yeah, and I know this is like a red dot or like a blue dot. So just I just want to tell them I can't explain. I don't just go to the dot. Like you have the dot. Like they're asking me, you know, should I turn here? Or should I go down here? And I just I just want to say go to the dot. Yeah, like it's you, you I, that's me? another another issue where you're like, look, you're you're using military geosynchronous satellite data. I cannot right. be more precise than that dot. Well, that's what I mean. That, that's what I mean. So I don't mean, um, I guess maybe address confirmation is not the right way to phrase it. It's more like directional confirmation or I can't, I, I often feel like I can't give them more information than they have. Like they have yeah. my actual address and then they have a dot. They already have a dot on the map. Yeah, yeah. That's that I don't like because like so, what you just nailed, you nailed it. I cannot give you any information that you don't already have. On top of the fact that I'm not even Thai. So I can't even like, I can't speak your language, which is my fault. I can't speak your language well enough to give you more than you already have. You know, you, you've got my physical address and you have a dot on an electronic map. And I know you have a phone. We need to record a Thai person saying that sentence on our computer. And then when they call, we got to hold our phone up to the computer speaker and play that audio clip. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I got. I think you're right. You're, the bottom line is you're Canadian. You're nice. You're right. You you are correct, sir. It's it's wrong to say loathe. Uh, I think maybe I'm being uh, I'm being a bit unreasonable because you're, the bottom line is they are just trying to do a good job. Yeah. I'm sure there are. T- I'm sure there are times where. They have been given inaccurate information, so that's what that's what you have to factor in. And it's uh, from their from their from their point of view, it's probably a, a convenience or a, a, an efficiency thing. I mean, would you rather drive around in a circle for fifteen minutes trying to find an address that doesn't exist, or just make a quick phone call to confirm? You know, these these drivers are on the clock, right? All right, damn it! All right, I guess I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna go. I guess I'm gonna go Canadian on this. You know, I live I I grew up in Ohio, right on the border, so I'm almost Canadian. I'm on the north north coast of America, dude. Yeah, so, but uh, I guess not Canadian enough. I'll just go live with. Live with, eh? It, 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 yeah. I mean, it's just I gotta I gotta just say it's pretty frustrating though when every delivery guy <laughs> wants to call and find out where I live, and I'm like, you you have it. Like what? What more do you need? <laughs> okay, a final thanks to our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm fuzzy feeling knowing that they're helping support the show. Find out more by clicking support on our website and connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. Yeah, we do. You can also listen to each episode on the YouTube. So you can send us a voicemail on the line that will feature on the show or even reach out to me directly on the Twitters where I am BKK Greg. So thanks for listening, everyone. Stay safe. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you back here next week. For sure. Head to BangkokPodcast.com forward slash support. True that. All right. Well, that's a lame intro. I'm not going to say that. What should I say? I got to say something new. It's hard coming up with something new every week. It is. Right on, daddy-o. No, that's not cool. I'll just go with something simple. (laughs) (laughs) It's worth a try, though. It's worth a try, though. You try to be cool, and you actually get further away from actual coolness. That's right.